all I am is a fiscal conservative who really wants America to come together and for people to be able to realize their potentials and not be told that they're oppressed or that they are an oppressor. That's that's kind of boils it down for me. I'd like to see some law and order so people don't get hurt. Michelle Tafoya, I feel like we've heard that one before. There can be no prosperity without law and order. We have to bring back law and order. I am your president of law and order. If I may, you led with your uh, a pro-choice libertarian and your fiscal conservative, and then you said, uh, I don't want to believe that uh, one group is oppressed and another party is oppressors, and that is like... That is eschewing just, hey, I'm a fiscal conservative. Sociologically speaking, I am a conservative and I believe in law and order. These are all platform issues and, and slogans of a of a party that is not just fiscally conservative. Lebitard Show producer Mike Ryan Ruiz pushes back and, well, this is what transpired. You said that you would like to believe, I'm paraphrasing here, that there isn't a group that is oppressed and there isn't a group that feels like they you don't want to feel like there's a group that there are oppressors, right? Can you explain that in your own words, what you mean by that? Yes, I can. The, the What is being taught in many places, and I don't know if any of you have kids in school. I do. I have two teenagers. And that the color of their skin automatically makes them racist at birth. So she makes this argument that every conservative before her has. What is your specific problem, once again, with critical race theory? What is one issue in critical race theory that you vehemently disagree with, that you well, think it's toxic and I'd divisive? I'd like you first to then define for me critical race theory, because people use that as an umbrella term to capture, oh, what, what I'm sorry, I'm, I'm affirming something for you? No, yeah, you are affirming. Like, I, you and I agree there. I do think that critical race theory is held up as a, a blanket statement that people don't necessarily have much understanding of. So we're in agreement so Why far. Why are you asking? Okay, so you're asking me what I think of, what I have a problem with, with critical race theory? Yes, I'm, uh, yes, that's a question. So define it for me then, because I, w I don't think we're always talking about the same thing. When people just well, throw out CRT, I'd like you to define it for well, me so I know what you're talking about specifically. Quite telling, she keeps asking questions instead of answering them, however. On her, if you're white, you're racist at birth line. So critical race theory is a framework. It's a theoretical framework that was developed in the 1980s by legal scholars to help us understand um, how it is that structural and racial disparities endure in our society and how that is actually engendered in some of our laws and policies. And so the idea was to get us to think uh, systemically as opposed to just thinking that ra racism manifests um, by individuals just mistreating each other. So to Tafoya, the actual theory runs counter to the narrative she pushes. She goes on to critique educator and scholar Robin D'Angelo's book, White Fragility, disassociating talking points from reality. Per The New Yorker, much of White Fragility is dedicated to pulling back the veil on these so-called pillars of whiteness, assumptions that prop up racist beliefs without our realizing it. Such ideologies include individualism or the distinctly white American dream that one writes one's own destiny and objectivity, the confidence that one can free oneself entirely from bias. As a sociologist trained in mapping group patterns, D'Angelo can't help but regard both precepts as naive at best and arrogant at worst, to be perceived as an individual. To not be associated with anything negative because of your skin color, she notes, is a privilege largely afforded to white people. Although most school shooters, domestic terrorists, and rapists in the U.S. are white, it is rare to see a white man on the street reduced to a stereotype. Then another gem. We live in the state of Florida and Governor Ron DeSantis has signed both the Stop Woke Act and the Don't Say Gay Bill. That's Roy Bellamy, longtime producer for Levitard. I've read the what you referred to as the Don't Say Gay Bill, and nowhere in that bill does it say Don't Say Gay, so I think we're mislabeling that bill. Hi, I'm Emily Mahoney, political editor at the Tampa Bay Times. Let's put it in context. This bill is part of a nationwide push by Republican legislatures around the country passing bills that target LGBTQ youth. Critics have rightfully argued this bill is discriminatory 
In an attempt by Republican lawmakers to stir political support amid a broader climate of increasing politicization of LGBTQ rights and heightened scrutiny of what children are taught in schools, advocates warn its passage could be harmful for students' mental health. Basically, DeSantis and co. are creating a problem that doesn't exist while simultaneously putting a target on the back of the LGBTQ community and youth in Florida. I personally don't see any parts of history being banned uh, from, from schools. I have not seen that. I don't see that. Another great moment from Tafoya. Has she paid attention to the book banning going on in this country driven by the party she supports? Speaking of Don't Say Gay, did she care to know the top three banned titles focus on LGBTQ plus individuals? or touch on same-sex relationships? Jerry on top came here towards the end of the discussion. We're spending so much of it fighting over things that I'm not sure really are existential, that they really make or break us as a society. You would say that, except I'd stop you on, we also want a universe where everyone is treated fairly and safely by the police as well, right? And and our, I, I think we can agree that your experience with the police might not be the same as the, the, your experiences at home might not be the same as they are in other parts of the country, no matter how diverse you think your neighbors are. As mine, basically. Right, I would definitely agree with that. We know that to be the, the case. The George Floyd incident was in my backyard. It was one of the most shameful, atrocious, heinous, sickening things I've ever seen in my life. Michelle, that teaches, though, critical race thinking, uh, you know, that would teach the, how the systemic police brutality that you find is built by police orders that come from, that descend from the slave system and treat whites differently than they do others. Like, that's, that's the, that's at the soul of the facts in the history. How is it then, when I talk to a number of black police officers, they don't agree with that, what you just said? Because uh, police officers. Meaning? Meaning they're going to defend their own. Seriously, what world is she living in? The numbers lay bare at the problem at hand. Yet Tafoya, who thinks critical race theory is bad and is attempting to show harder and harder for right-wing political types, goes over a hypothetical with no proof and chooses blissful ignorance over everything. USA Today reported what happens when an officer does the right thing. To many in law enforcement, snitching against another cop is a betrayal that can't go unpunished. Those who enforce this code, the blue wall of silence, have stuffed dead rats and feces into fellow officers' lockers. They've issued death threats, ignored requests for backup, threatened family members, and planted drugs on the officers who reported misconduct. In South Carolina, an officer leaked the fact that fellow deputies beat a prisoner who later died in custody. In Florida, a detective reported a captain who had impregnated a 16-year-old girl and then paid for the abortion. In Oregon, a sergeant complained that a co-worker bragged about killing an unarmed teen. After speaking out, all of them were forced out of their departments and were branded traitors by their fellow officers. However, many of the cops accused of misconduct kept their jobs or faced only minor punishments. USA Today found and officers who lied or stayed silent in support of an accused colleague later secured promotions, overtime, and admiration from their peers. No worries though for Tafoya, cause she said the following after the Lebertard interview on her home of Fox News. The second I got on, bam, was ambushed with, you're anti-CRT, you're a racist, you're a, you cannot read the Florida law without it being a homophobe. I mean, I was absolutely ambushed. At no point, did they call Michelle Tafoya racist? At no point did they call Michelle Tafoya homophobic. However, it is pretty revealing that when she goes on Fox News, she lies to score cheap political points from their viewers.